Let's see. Testing. Testing, testing, testing. Making sure you can hear me. Sweet. That is working. Awesome. So I'm going to teach a little bit about the disciples of Balaam. And why do I feel like this is the hour we need to do that? It's because we need to filter some things out. Okay. Churches are going back to services. People are coming back into the church. And if you don't have discernment, you will find yourselves surrounded by some disciples of Balaam. And right now, more than ever, we need to have discernment. And discernment is something that um, not many are carrying because, you know, it's something that we haven't been using. One second here, because for some reason, every time I get on live, my phone goes off. Okay, so what is the teachings of Balaam? It's usually just false teachers and false prophets. Um, in Revelations chapter 2, verse 14, they talk about it. It says, I have these few things against you. You have there those who are holding the teaching of Balaam, who taught to cast a stumbling block before the children and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit to sexual immortality. So let's just pray before we begin so that we can have discernment and wisdom in what we're getting ready to do. Um, hold on one second. Father, we just thank you right now for this appointed time this divine moment god lord you know all things and the reason why we're here today god and those who are watching and why they are here and so father we just we just want to thank you for your wisdom for your spirit of counsel and knowledge to not just be judgmental lord but to use discernment which is things that you test in the spirit and so lord i bind up superstition I bind up suspicion and I bind up the heart of judgment and I release the spirit of discernment on those who are watching. That if they are watching, Lord, you have called them to be a watch in the church amongst your people. Lord, it's not just the building. It's about the people of God. And Lord, we are in a time that you are getting ready or should I say already is here where your people are awakening spiritually from their slumber. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you are touching the hearts of men. And, Lord, that we must be as wise as the serpent and as humble as a dove in this very time, in this coming season. And, Lord, we just glorify you in this, in Jesus' name. Okay. So, the teachings of Balaam. As you can see right now in this time of social media, <clears throat> we have seen lies that have overcome greater, have become greater than the truth. And that is not normal, okay? People... I mean, I heard this guy say the other day, and I, it just blew me back because I just wonder, you know, like, where is society today? So, you know, he said, I heard that the president was, um, was, uh, uh, fell ill and is now in COVID. And I began to search out the media. I couldn't sleep that night. So I stayed awake going through the media. And I thought, my God, jeez, what am I going to talk about searching it out? How, how does something, you know, like that trigger you 
to just spend all night going through the night into dabbing into social media. And I'm just like, Lord, have mercy on us because people do perish for the lack of knowledge. And I don't recommend a lot of things, but there's one thing I did and I felt okay to do it. And I searched out something and I searched the book of the enemy. Okay. So just like we have a Bible, Satan duplicates everything God has done. In one of his books, he said that he would be the king over social media. He will use all types of people in all types of places. From nursing, to the doctors, to the business, to the lawyers, to the judges. He is going to... Um, he is going to get them and recruit them into his army and he will use them to, fa to facilitate the assignment for him here on earth. And not many know this because I'm sure that if you're too weak now, I wouldn't even recommend you to even read because you have to have a ground foundation to be able to search out certain things. And so for me to have to see this, this guy confessing on the news that when he heard about Trump being ill, he just became ill and had to seek out the social media for all through the night and could not sleep just from the news. And I'm just like, wow, if he was in the Lord, that would be a weapon like like an arse, like in the in the Lord, like to go in through the night and pray through something would bring such a phenomenal breakthrough in so many areas. Um, instead, he stood up in worry and worry about this this thing, you know, about this news. And I thought to myself, I work <laughs> like I understand. I'm seeing you know, the darkness take over the hearts of men. And now it's revealing all the hard situation of man. But, you know, what's happening? And a while back, I can see about maybe three months ago, um, the Lord was telling me about the doctrine of Balaam. And I said, y listen, you, you come to Christ and you start thinking, oh my goodness, what does it end? It doesn't. Because... You know, someone who is a spirit doesn't sleep. They have no need for sleep. The only ones that have need for sleep are, are creation. You know, the, the birds, the, the humans, we are in need of sleep because our body needs rest. But when it's a spirit, there's no need for sleep. They don't sleep. So the work of darkness is unending. It's over and over and over. Even while you are sleeping, the darkness is rampant. And so, you know, that's why it's so important for us to constantly be just producing the word of God into the air on a constant basis. The word of God constantly should be um, everything we speak, everything we do. And people will say, well, is there anything else? I totally speak English. I speak to people on you know just basically just speaking but what i'm saying comes out from the bible so when they hear you speak and they say wow such a young person with such wisdom they don't even know that the wisdom i am giving them has everything to do with um the bible one second Okay, so I can speak in a regular, normal terms with people with using scripture, and they don't even know it. So what I'm saying is that the word of God should be planted everywhere at all times, in every situation. I, I, we don't have room to give to any more lies 
any more manipulation, any more de deception. We don't have room. We don't have room. You lived your whole life in a lie. And then you come to Christ. We don't need to live in any more lies. We already found the truth. So when you're in Christ, we don't need any more lies. We need to dismantle the lie. And not through our opinion. Not through our opinion. And not through uh, what we feel. But we need to filter it out through the word of God. And if ever there was a time ever, like it is now, is now the time. Well, we need to make that. The only thing is the word of God. The Bible says that the word of God will demonstrate itself once the kingdom of, when the kingdom, the, the gospel of the kingdom is preached. When we start talking about the word of God, he backs it up with his power. So if that person is in need of deliverance, then you better believe the power is coming through to bring deliverance. If the person needs healing, the power of God is coming through to bring. So we have to reestablish this right now. Okay. We have to reestablish it. On a greater measure. Like, that's just what I want to emphasize. On a greater measure. So the doctrine of Balaam. Is something that's found in Revelation chapter 2 verse 14. You know he talks about how. You know this teaching was taught. And it was a stumbling block. And people started to. Um, instead of you know. Just kind of living out a life with idols. What's an idol? For those who don't know. An idol is a God that you have put before God. And people say, oh, that's not, you know, I'm not doing that. Okay. <laughs> Even those who have been walking with the Lord for a long time have placed something at some point before him. And the Lord is quick to reveal that because he is jealous and he will not have another God before him. And so I got, I trust me when I tell you that you could have been in 40 years in ministry, 50, 60 years. I don't care. At some point you have placed a God before God. And what am I saying? A God I'm saying anything that is in a, you know, that's taking control. Anything that you feed, that you go first to before God, that's, that's an idol. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta cast that idol down. You cannot be a part of the army of the Lord with an idol standing before you. And so it can be as easy. You can, you can put your children as an idol. You can put your husband as an idol. Anything that you have placed before God. See, the, the Bible says that we are to seek the Father first. So before I start my day as a mother, as a wife, as a, as a daughter, you know, I, as anything, I have to seek God first. I have to be with him first because everything I do will come out of that place. And so when you're not doing that on a consistent basis, and I'm talking about every day, then guess what? You can be weak and open to the teachings of Balaam. So the teachings of Balaam are found in Revelation chapter 2. The other day, exactly, and I wrote down the date, September 21st, the Lord was teaching on another measure of false, the false teachers and the false prophets. And one of the things, let's go there for Matthew chapter 9, 36. One of the things the Lord was revealing to me was how this ministry, number one, does not turn anybody back to God. Okay. This, does, this ministry does not turn anyone back to God. Those are one of the signs of knowing if you are, are eating from the table of Balaam. Is this ministry turning people back to God or is it turning it to them? Uh, Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 says, But when he saw the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them because they fainted. And were scattered like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are few. And he goes on to talk about that. Why am I saying that? Because Jesus has compassion for the people that are harassed, that are helpless and distressed, dispirited like a lost sheep without a shepherd. 
That is what happens when you're following the false teachings of teachers and prophets, false prophets. You will find that the people that are following are like helpless, harassed, distressed, oppressed, depressed, dispirited sheep, dispirited people that are without a shepherd. You can see that Jesus is not number one in their life because they're harassed, they're helpless, they're distressed, they're down in spirit, and they're lost without direction. And one of the things um, with coming to Christ is you are empowered. You are no longer helped. And even when you're harassed, you have the power to break that harassment. And your spirit shouldn't be downcasted, but yet uplifted. It's, it's a reverse here. And so this ministry turns people away from God with no true compassion for them to return back to being spiritual and faithful to the Lord. When, okay, I want to be able to just break this down for people who, who are watching that don't understand much of the Bible, okay? Faith. Faith is a gift given. Faith is a gift that's in man. That faith in man always triggers them to know that there's something higher. There's something greater. There's something greater in the world than we can understand. And so what happens is people start to seek out other things other than God. Um, they want to seek out psychics, mediums, tarot cards, you know, witchcraft. All of that is just revealing to humanity, even new age, you know, you got all these types of stuff. All of that is revealing and saying, hello. And it's like a knock. There's something greater in this world. And your body says, well, I really don't want to turn to God. I want to go and seek it out for myself. And then you start seeking it out in other places, but God, those are teachers, teachings and false prophets of Balaam. So when you, your body goes to a direction opposite from God, it's a false, okay? And it's sad, but sometimes we waste so much time in these things that, you know, if not redirected by someone who knows the truth, they can stay in that path forever and they'll never see the, the true the truth. They'll never know their purpose. They'll never know their destiny. They'll never know why they were created. And every day they'll wake up and say, I don't understand how I'm still living in this world. That's so full of hatred. That's so full of sin. That's so full of wickedness. And I, I'm miserable. I'm miserable. I don't understand a God that, that allows us to be miserable. What's the point of us being created? And that is the condition of living in a life under Balaam. Okay, in this case, um, it can come as easy as it comes to the world. It can come into the church. And so I'm talking about church identify, just identify, identify this in the church. It's one who watches over and provides the welfare of the church. Okay, that's what a shepherd is. A shepherd is one who is in charge to watch over the and provide, you know, Provision like, you know, taking care of your guardianship over the church. What is the church? Not the building. It is the people. Okay. So church is not the building. It's the people. You can have church anywhere. You are the church, not the building. So the false shepherd is one who doesn't care and does not give proper care, does not feed the true word of God, nor protection from the outside attacks. There's no protection against wrong doctrines nor teachings. So what am I saying? And I'm talking to now to the church. 
there is people that have came from this, let's say maybe they came from this doctrine. At some point, they ate from the table of it. And they came and they began to lead people. And now what happens is they start to lead people without a care for them. They don't properly care for them or tend for them. They don't properly feed them the true word of God. Nor is there any protection from any outside attacks. Nor is there any protection against uh, wrong teachings and wrong doctrines. It is free for all, for all who come. And that is so dangerous. And it's so dangerous to, to even be in a place like that. It's almost like me taking my innocent baby and putting this baby in the midst of, uh, let's say, rapists, murderists, um, that are not in, that are not saved or even have been reconciled, whatever. I'm talking about taking my child and putting them in a pen full of wolves and expecting my child to survive while it's surrounded by wolves with no one there to take care of her or, or protect the child or any of that. I'm just going to take this baby and I'm going to throw it in the midst of wolves. And so me as a parent, I'm supposed to protect this child. I'm supposed to make sure this child's safe. I'm supposed to take care of this child. I'm supposed to nourish this child. But I don't do that. I'm just going to take it and I'm throwing the wolves and I'm expect this child to defend for itself. That's not how it works. So how do I, how are you going to identify that you're amongst this? How do you identify that this is happening? Well, I'm telling you, they won't care. They're not going to properly nourish you. They're not going to feed you the true word of God. You're going to find yourself under a massive amount of tax. And there's no protect, protection against uh, false doctrine, false teachings of the word. Alongside of this teacher will come the false prophet. So your pro the false prophet duties will uh, not attend to the flock suffering. Okay, so prophets are guards of the church. They protect the church from evil things. God has gifted them with gifts that are supernatural, that they can discern, or should I say they, they know when something's wrong. They know when... They smell when something is in, in, in amongst the gathering that is not of God. They um, they just have that supernatural ability. Yes, I don't care. People are like, well, what are they, superheroes? Call it what you want to call it, however way you need to identify it to make you understand it is what it is. God is spirit. He is not human. And there is a supernatural side to God that helps equipped us with weapons against the devil period so we get the supernatural ability from god they help to produce unfaithfulness to god okay you won't feel the need to have to repent of your sins and turn back to the lord you will feel the need to continue in your ways of being compromised. What is compromise? Okay. Let's take an example. Okay. Let's say, you know, there's things where you have to, in marriage, compromise certain things, right? But you won't compromise things that are not according to the word of God. But let's say... There is a spouse, whatever, and, you know, even, let's do that. Let's say that there's a spouse and he's compromising the ways that is against the word of God. You know, it's not my job to say I agree because I do not agree. I absolutely do not agree. So you will either stand for what you don't agree because it's not lining up to the word, or you're going to compromise to make them feel happy. Even though, in your mind, you know that it is wrong. Okay? The only reason why I'm saying that is because I just said the word of God. I didn't say according to my opinion. I didn't say according to how I feel. I am basing the situation according to what God's word says. Because that's my life manual. So the word of God says this. And you're doing this. How does, how does, that, how does that make it right? Because 
according to what what the Bible says, this is what's right. Okay. The reason why people don't come to 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 become Christian in the world is because they're scared of the word submission. Uh, when we were when when we were in the, in the Spanish church, there's this word that they would use that would scare me to death. And it was, oh my gosh, what was that word? Oh man, I can't think about that word, but it was almost like, you know, entregate, something like that, where it was like, um, did you surrender, right? Your life to him. And then they would use this word and I would think like, what does that mean? I, you know, the reason why it scared me is because it meant that I would have to give up things that I like doing that is sin. It would mean that with the things of my sin, the things that I like doing in sin would mean that I, I would have to give those things up. And that's the only reason why, um, you know, that word would scare those who haven't fully committed their life to Christ is because um, they know that that word meant you would have to give up that lifestyle. And so that's what I'm saying here when I said compromise. Compromise means you give up the lifestyle of sin so that you can live a right life. And let me tell you something, I don't regret it. And a lot of people that I've known that, that are saved and come out from the world and come out from addiction and come out from things, they don't regret it because there's freedom. You don't need those things. So one of the one of the indicators of the false prophet will get will will leave you to never repent and to stay in your sin, which is totally opposite of that person's grace. Okay? Totally opposite. So God's holy word will always demand demand a cleaning inside and a removal of darkness from the inside. Okay? This type of teaching is the blind leading the blind. If we go to Matthew chapter 15, verse 14. Go to third. Okay, so 12, let's see. Here it says, then his disciples came and said to him, do you know that the Pharisees were offended after they heard this saying? You know, usually people are always offended after you say something that is, you know, word and it convicts them. I've, I did not, I was not aware of that, but I started to become aware of it when people were saying I was offended by you and I had no idea. And they realized that they were offended because what was said convicted them. And instead of it being a place of conviction, they felt they were being condemned. Okay, that shamed. And then they took that and twisted it. And then all of a sudden became offended by you. Okay? Because there 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 was there was a twisting. You know, we have to be careful and make sure that we're listening with the right heart when people are delivering the word of God. And that happened often. I was wondering, I'm like, God, what is it that's happening? And the Holy Spirit revealed to me. It wasn't nothing you did. You know, you're, this is this is who you are. This is how you're created. You give the word and truth in its full context. There, there, you can't listen, guys. For those who are leaders and are ministering to people who have not completely been, they are not even looking to pursue their freedom in total pursuing, like who can grab a hold of the truth of of God and still have that twisting of a le a le a leviathan in them. That's that pride that comes to twist the word of God to get them to be offended so that they can no longer receive from you. That has not, listen, I can't do anything about that. Do you see what I'm saying? Your heart is yours. And all I can do is deliver the word of God. When I deliver the word of God, I'm led by the spirit of God, which means that if it follows up with some healing, if it follows up with some deliverance, that's how it will follow up to those who receive the word of God. To those who can't receive the word of God, 
it would follow up with a combination that will get them offended. And guess what? You just missed out on a prime opportunity, not because of me, but because of the Lord himself that was getting ready to deliver you from this twisting spirit. I, I, it just, you know, I was saying this to the girls the other day. It, it just, I'm like, Lord, <laughs> what is up with these people? And it, you know what it is? It's that twisting spirit that comes to twist up the doctrine in the person. It comes to steal the seed in that person. And so it's like if I was teaching out of the teachings of Balaam, I promise you that that spirit will let them receive because it's not, it's not going to twist what is false to make it true. But the Holy Spirit will come and say, if you are walking with the Lord in the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit will come and say, something's not right with this teaching and I refuse to eat it. Okay, I need to process it. Now, I didn't tell you that, you know, I said I would need to process it to see if it is, if it is, you know, because the word says something, but you're kind of contradicting what the word says. And I can't find the truth in that. But those who are living in a lie, who like to live in a lie, who are okay with not living with God, they are living in that place of being a, a student of Balaam. Okay, and you are living a compromised life that has turned you away from God. And that is not of the Lord. And if this season you still find yourself there, then it's time to get delivered and come up out of that teaching. Because there's only one discipleship that was sent forth from the time of the cross. After the cross, Jesus came back and still for 40 days continued to disciple his people. There's something about that that people have yet to fail to understand. That after the cross, after he died, Jesus resurrected from life, from, from death into life. And still came back to disciple for 41 days. How is that? How is that? Do we have even the understanding of the reality and the power that is in the gospel? I don't know. Because I'm not sure what gospel you're reading that does not change you nor convict you to change. So when I, I was reading this, I'm saying, Lord, you know, how many people talk about, listen, I can't, I'm going to make this really clear, guys. I preach and teach out of my place of conviction out of my places of experience i don't preach and teach just to be a hypocrite like the pharisees the last thing i ever want to be is found in the house of a pharisee because that place is full of hypocrisy everybody who comes who, who is with us in ministry all see my transparency and nothing is hidden nothing is hidden and guess what? They can't even comprehend how my life can continue in faith, fully strong in the fire, when, when things around me don't even look to line up because I believe in the Lord. I don't believe in man. I believe that the Lord uses men to bring and fulfill his purpose here on earth. And one of the biggest and only purpose is the identity of the sons and daughters of God to waken them up. I believe that in that, but I, I'm not, I don't, I don't put my trust in, in the man. I put my trust in the Lord and there's where we fail. So people are expecting so many things from, you know, from leadership. When the number one thing you should be expecting is a true word of God. Number one, true word of God. Do they carry the true word of God? Are they causing me to turn back to God? Are they causing me to turn back to God? What did I say, Matthew, right? Uh, he 13 Matthew chapter 15 verse 13 every plant which my heavenly father has not planted will be uprooted leave them alone they are blind leaders of the blind and if the blind lead the blind both will fall into their ditch then Peter said explain this parable to us and Jesus says are you still don't understand do you not yet understand that whatever enters at the mouth goes into the stomach and is cast out into the sewer but those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart and they defile the man. Okay. He's making it simple. What you eat, you know, it goes out. But what comes out is coming from the heart. And there is how we know the condition of the person. For out of the heart proceeds the evil thoughts, murders, adultery, sexual immortality, thefts, false witness, blasphemy. Those are all the things which defile the man. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile a man. Okay. 
So what is defiling the, the human society right now? It's a, it's you're, you're, it's being shown to you that it's the heart of men. Okay. My point of this is how can you be aware of your false teachers and false prophets? I just gave you some guidelines. They won't bring you back to God. They're not preaching the true word of God. They are allowing you to stay in your sin. They're saying it's okay. It's okay. And you, you don't find any conviction. There's no, 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 none of that there. And you're just eating wrong teachings. Okay. Bell worship is Satan seducing the bride of Christ to live a life that was, was natural now has become unnatural. So the bell worship is just Satan. You sitting under the discipleship of Baal is just Satan seducing you not to be the bride of Christ, not to live a life of abundance, not to live a life of health and peace, a peace of life, like peace in your life. And what, whatever was natural is now unnatural. And now since it's unnatural, you call it natural. Unbelievable. How does that make sense? So what would be natural? Um, man and a woman. That is natural. And now we have men and men, women and women, and everybody, even, even believers are saying, well, love is love. Oh my gosh, are we blind? You know, and Jesus makes it clear, leave them. Whatever's not of God will be uprooted. And so at some point, if when a person continues to want to indulge in something that is not natural, you know, the Lord lets them go and it's, it's found in Romans until they get to the end of themselves and actually see that they need God. And sometimes it just has to be that way. And, you know, at those moments, you know, you, you, you it's just, I'm not even going to go there, but sometimes we just have to let a person go far in so that they can see that at the end of the tunnel, there's a dead end without God. And so why is the Holy Spirit revealing this? Because spiritual revival must accompany with a return of moral and repentance. What is moral? What would be found holy? what would be found right in the eyes of God. When that begins to return as well with the repentance. So we got repentance that'll come forth and then it has to be a life that is moral, that is normal, that is natural. And so that's when a spiritual revival will happen. And let me explain the difference that revival is for one person. Awakening is for everybody. And so what happens is, is if I can waken like if i can bring revival into one person's life and the person wakes up then imagine a whole full of room of 10 15 people that are this way that we can cause an awakening to happen so i mean and I, i'm not trying to get into all of that but true leaders they live like every moment of their life is being observed by god okay every moment of our life we're thinking about what is god thinking about that what is what does God think about my thoughts? What is God thinking about what is happening? Um, we see to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you think about this? We never exclude him. Never, never, never. False acts like God doesn't seem or doesn't actually care. Okay. So false teachers will act like God doesn't seem to care about what's happening with people. False prophets want people to forget God um, and marry another. Okay? So true leaders will always look for every moment of their lives knowing that they're being observed by God. Oh my goodness. I love the fact that people are like, well, His grace and mercy, Lord have mercy on their souls that if you keep thinking that we're supposed to be living our life in sin and we're covered by the blood, you are absolutely incorrect. You are absolutely incorrect. When you love someone, you want the best for them. You want the best out of the relationship and you want to give your best. You want to give your best dinner. You want to give your best time. You want to give your best. You don't want to give them seconds. Okay. You don't like sloppy seconds. You don't like being second. So therefore imagine the, the, the feelings are mutual. Um, also. 
True leaders are associated with fire. They have holiness. They have cleansing. They have a hammer that forces change one way or the other. They will continue to plow that hammer until there is change. You know, false teachers will use God's name to give their falsehood some truth, which is absolutely, you know, that's like saying, uh, okay, so that's like you sending someone as a referral and you send this person off and tell them, okay, tell them that I sent you. That's, that's usually what they will do. And it's just like, just so that you could be like believing that this is the this is them that sent them. They claim to have supernatural experiences when they never did. They'll claim to have miracles. They claim to have all these things that God has done, but it's absolutely false. They, it's never happened. So therefore they're lying. And the Bible makes it clear that there's only a, one father of lies that have children who also lie. That's why it's important not to lie because you don't want to line up with the father of lies. False teachers will always center around people around them and their needs. They'll tell the difference between the word of God and their lack of effectiveness to produce a sincere repentance. So we have to be mindful that these people will draw people to themselves, to their needs. Look at me, look at me. And never to say, look at God, look at Jesus and look at these, these things in the Bible. And, you know, to produce some type of repentance. Repentance is it's a conviction that makes you say, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to live my life like this anymore. And that's what repentance is. Um, they refuse to bear the burden. Okay, what's a burden? Okay, so you're, let's say we all have friends. A friend calls you and they start crying. And you're just like, you know, you listen to your friend. You, you, you comfort your friend. You talk to your friend, you help carry that burden. And these, these false leader teachers and, and prophets won't do that. The obedience, they don't have any obedience to God's word. They are not interested in carrying the burden of obedience to his word, whether old or new, they do not care. And the false, the false replace the burden of Christ's committed life with something that appears easier in life. So you got to be careful with those motivational preachers, okay? Um, who motivate you, you know, in areas that do not bring change. You see what there's a difference. Our motivation, to it should get you to get up and bring change in your life. Not to get you to feel okay where you are. And I've, you know, even now something comes up to my mind when I say that. And there, there, we have had many. We have met many people who have ruled, like just raised up out of nowhere. And they start preaching to thousands of people. And they start giving these motivational speeches about, you know, it's okay and all this stuff. And it does not challenge them to, you know, to reach the next level with God. You know, it just keeps them the same. Powerless, helpless hopeless, but okay with it. You know, like, I'm okay with it. I'm not going to tell you that we don't have bad days. But I tell you that I'll have a bad day and God will turn it around. I don't spend all day carrying that bad day. You know, I might, let's say, for example, if a morning starts off in a bad day, you know, um, that doesn't mean that I'm going to stay in that, in that bad moment all day. Does it bother me? Absolutely. Is it is it hindering me? You know, may, causing me to feel a certain way? Absolutely. So what's my answer? Guess what? When well, nobody wants to hear prayer, I got to go. I got to get in my car. I got to get in the bathroom. And I got to tell God to help me. Because that's my, you know, I'm feeling weak. I can't overcome this feeling. I can't overcome this, you know, this depression, whatever the case may be. I, I just... I mean, I can't fight it. This was not right. You know, the injustice, if it was something that was bad, that was done to you, you know, all this stuff. And you say, God, you see it, you hear it, um, help, help this, help me in this situation. And, you know, I give it about another five minutes. This is what people don't see. Give it about five minutes, 10 minutes. 
And you're going to see that that moment right there that you gave to God is kind of like in the background. You know, it's in behind you. And you're okay now moving forward. Did you even realize that he helped you? Can't do it on your own. We're, we just can't do the certain, you know, just life alone we can't do on our own. We need Jesus. And so I feel as we are now returning back into our fellowships and we're turning back to our rightful place of our first love and, you know, and, and really coming back to the gospel of, of seeking souls and making sure they get saved. Um, I want you to keep an eye for those that will try to come with, you know, or maybe sat under this type of teaching and begin to help them see the truth. And, you know, be, be careful. Just be careful because we're just, it's, you, you know, people say, the world has been in darkness for a while. It's absolutely true. The slept, the church has slept. It's absolutely true. Our, you know, revivals that we've had didn't last very long. And that's absolutely true. And now we are even in, in more darkness. And that's absolutely true. The Bible says that we will get darker. It will. We haven't yet to see much. And mind you, what we're seeing already is, is, is like, oh my goodness, what is happening in this world? But there's an answer. There's an answer. And we are that answer because we hold truth. You know, we hold the truth. And this answer can help many people be set free to live a life that they were originally created to live. And so I think this is a prime time because we're going to have a lot of people coming to see if it, God is real, if the Holy Spirit does exist. And um, to test to see if it's true because they're, they're, they're tired of living in darkness or they're starting to see that there's more darkness than good. And what could it hurt for us to kind of see um, something different? So with that being said, as us being the church, I want you to be mindful that these, this is an actual doctrine that exists. These are actual things that were being taught to people. And now we have to be the light of correction to be able to lead them back to the to God, the true nature of God, the true identity of them, of them in Jesus, and the true word of God. And so I, I believe that it's coming down. What am I saying? I believe that false teachers and false prophets are coming down. It says it here. <laughs> it says God will uproot them. It says God will uproot them. And when they get uprooted, the truth will rise. So let's stand in that. Let's, let's stand and believe in that today, that God is uprooting lies, false teachers, false prophets, and the truth is coming forward like never before. And so that's it. I could feel like we're done here. And I hope that this helps you to identify where, you know, where these, these things are happening around you. And as you proceed to move forward and we begin to gather again, keep your eyes open, make sure that nothing is coming in to the body that should not be coming in. We have a great time of, of restarting and, um, this, this fresh new thing that God is reestablishing, let it be God, let it be God, let it be God. And not man, let it be found in his word. Let it be founded in his word. Let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit has been longing to do is help, comfort, encourage, clean, um, purify, sanctify, and just let that happen again. And so I hope that this blessed you. And I think I am done for today. Until the next time, I will pour out another teaching as often as I can and um, as the Lord leads.